in that time frame, we were very worried about moving as quickly as possible. The feeling was that this was a national health crisis and we had to do our part. They started demolition when we were still working on drawings. So this was real time, point and shoot. Here's a sketch, here's the drawings, here's what we know so far, here's the next layer of information which results in changes. Everything needs to be treated with that sort of NASA approach to process. From the initial days of the Ebola preparations, it was clear to hospitals throughout the United States that each hospital needed to be prepared. The reality hit home that a biocontainment unit separate from normal clinical operations would be a great asset. Patient bed here would be bed number one. If we ever had a patient, this is where they would be centered. It's a little larger room. It's made to accommodate a second patient. If it were a relative or something, you can see they share the same airspace. We realized that this type of unit would lend itself for any highly infectious disease. We have a responsibility to stay current with what's happening in healthcare. We are in a situation where we have to keep changing our facilities and bringing in new technology in order to keep up and in order to support the physicians and the nurses who do the wonderful care here. The safety of the hospital and the patients at large were the number one concern. And so we worked very closely with hospital epidemiology and infection control to ensure that we had the appropriate standards in place. It was a very proud moment to see how many people at our institution came forward to join this team. So I'm going to take everybody on a quick tour of the unit and then we're going to break you up into groups. There are a countless number of individuals who have provided support both to build the capacity for care, to build the personnel support so that other providers can step away from their other responsibilities and come into the unit. Part of the training was hiring a, a nurse educator for the biocontainment unit. She's our subject matter expert when it comes to PPE and infection control, and, and she also uh, communicates what the expectations of the infection that we're dealing with at the time. Because the message to the institution is that the, you're not going to have to worry where that cart was. Was it up on the VCU? Is it clean? Those types of things. It's not leaving here. The urgency of the situation became very clear and everyone accelerated their preparations. And I think that our biocontainment unit, uh, the way that it is designed and the way our team is being trained, uh, is positioned to really lead this field going forward. One of the most incredible experiences in building the biocontainment unit has been the spirit of collaboration and the multidisciplinary support that we've had from every part of the hospital. If you can name the service, they have been involved in helping us build this capacity, and we could not have done it without every part of this hospital system. What I took away from this experience was just how impressive it was that there were these, this group of clinicians who hadn't worked together before that gelled so quickly. We can be very proud of our organization, of our institution, and the leaders who really stepped forward bravely into that space, saying that this was consistent with the mission of our organization uh, and really a role that we wanted to play, both for patient care as well as for the training and, uh, and potentially research down the road of how to safely prepare and care for patients with highly infectious diseases.